Here are three trees for players with substance addiction. This tree is for people who enjoy playing while drinking. It adds essences for making some quick sea when low on funds, abyss with the hope to drop that precious Amamanu's gaze, and harbingers with the hope to someday find fracturing shards or mirror shards. Wait, this is literally just my tree. I added ritual with the hope to get offered divines, Kirik is added to hope for Cortex, Poor Joys, Untainted Paradise, and etc. maps, as well as getting Easy Shaper or Elder maps. Finally, Uber Shaper is added since it's the cheapest Uber boss to attempt, as far as the cost of fragments go. All in all, this whole setup is wishful thinking and will never actually pay out within a league. Alcoholics like myself will often take gamble risks which are unlikely to actually happen. We also try to go very fast through maps and prove our build is good at a quick clear, and then we exit the map when the boss dies and try a new one. The next tree is for people who enjoy playing while stoned. While stoned, it's easy to get absorbed into the game and for the passage of time to feel different. So unlike alcoholics, most stoners will spend longer than average while actually inside of a map. Frankly, they won't even realize they didn't open a new map up recently. They may even think that they ran two or three maps when they haven't even finished one. For this reason, Delirium is perfect since it works best with map completion. Every stoner I've known also generally farms Crimson Temple over and over to get apothecaries. Tell me I'm wrong. For this reason, they take singular focus. Rituals inside of Delirium are very helpful for getting both extra tribute boost and Delirium reward layers. We throw in Abyssal Army for extra monsters while inside the Delirium, also to buff up this buff. A lot of this hardly matters though. Most stoners' time is spent in the game actually in their stash, trying to find the item they were working on crafting. In reality, they accidentally left the item on their crafting bench and forgot about it. This final tree is for people who enjoy playing while high on bath salts, meth, or heroin. These players take the tormented spirit nodes because they think it is applied to them. They also turn off most mechanics except for Alva and Einhar. Alva is perfect when you need to stop partway into a map to itch yourself or to take another hit. Also, when you're high on bath salts, you have a difficult time differentiating reality from the game, so you really don't want to die, or you may think you died in real life. They thus take Wellspring of Creation to minimize monster damage. However, to combat the extra monster life, they also take Dance of Destruction. These two nodes combined have the effect of increasing monster life overall without any additional upsides at all, but these players aren't exactly thinking about their future. Many of these players are more likely to enjoy animal abuse, so they take all the Einhar nodes, with the exception of Hunt for Kraken. These players say, fuck the water, fuck the ocean. Find me a meth head who likes to swim, and I have a broken bridge in Act 2 to sell you.